outside Baby, me that record these songs Fill me with your Holy Spirit Use me as a vessel to bring glory to you and uplift your people Yeah, edify Yeah, ayy Yeah Pedal to the flow Make it to the kingdom Fast and I can have no soul tied with any demons I was going through affliction and it happened for a reason Making songs like I'm David, giving glory to the Father yeah. I ain't had my daddy, but it made me be smarter They floating on the beat, they always talking about a chopper I don't play no football, ain't no need for me to rush Spirit is important, but God Yeah, spirit is important, gotta watch what you put in your stomach Couldn't let her go, cause I had a soul tie Daddy for so long, relationship was toxic Seen the red flags, I ain't ignore it, couldn't stop it Pray to my eye because he got me out the pit Reminiscing on my past, a lot of things is making sense They riding with them cities like they play with Derry Jeter When I see temptation, I be running like a cheater Cause I don't wanna go, I don't wanna go I can't lose my soul, I can't lose my soul no, no. I don't wanna go, I don't wanna go no. I won't lose my soul, I won't lose my soul okay. No, no, no I won't lose my soul, I won't lose my soul Whoa. No, I cannot go, no, I cannot go yeah. I can't lose my soul, I can't lose my soul I done risked everything before I used to gamble Repenting on the daily, every day, uh, Repenting every day, I tell the Father you can have it all Holy Spirit here to stress, not no Tyler, no Robin choppers in the hood and they be looking like it's bad day. Wasn't good for my soul and I was You wasn't good for my soul and you had me going bad, bad Made mistakes, I ain't complaining yeah, you like my energy, but I ain't like your energy Try to show you knowledge, try to show you about our history We would please the flesh, but we ain't never had no chemistry God told me let you go, I wasn't listening I might gotta fast and gotta pray, don't want no soul tie Good against the evil, yeah, we living in the matrix Walk up in the spirit, kill the flesh like you, Jake Lord, forgive me for my sins, I don't wanna play with Satan Hear me, yeah. Had to cut you off, had to let you go yeah. Had to cut you off, had to let you go you I won't lose my soul, I won't lose my soul nah. I won't lose my soul, I won't lose my soul I won't lose it I can't lose my soul, I can't lose my soul Nah, no. I can't lose my soul, I can't lose my soul Nah, nah Had to cut you off, had to let you go Had to let you go, yeah Now the love of compassion 
this down. Down, 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 down. But we can fix it if we wanna. But I don't see no intentions of our people changing. But that don't mean that we not gonna get better with time. I'm not talking wild. Look at the sign. Sins. If we want to gain a friend in the heavenly throne where our home is, where all of our brothers know Joan is, full of milk and honey, no homeless, so we got to be about his business, get this, confess sins, baptize and never look back, even if your friends and family don't want to come and do that with you, but we gon' get some brothers and sisters, so never let's say and play on your mind and your feelings, as long as you do your portion and fulfill your mission. Most people die not having a chance to repent, but why? And some people live, live just to die in the sins. In the sins. And a few people listen and change and they seek to repent. Yeah. But who's gonna change their ways? Yeah. Who's gonna seek his face this and truly give it? Hey, that's the question we gotta ask ourselves. Who really love God? Who really wanna repent? Who really wanna renew their mind and change their ways? See, cause the only way we gonna make it into the kingdom is by forsaking our flesh, forsaking what we wanna do, and following what the most high will. Following what the God of Israel expect out of us. Each day we tempted. Each day we go away from the most high. But we gotta continue to strive for righteousness. Continue to be right within his eyes. Lay down what we think is right. And do what the Bible says to do. You know what I'm saying? But a lot of people don't want to do that. That's the only way we gonna make it on earth as it is in heaven. So understand, I'm not trying to preach your head off. I just want you to learn. You gotta discern. You gotta earn your way into the kingdom. Trumpet in the middle of the hood, trying to wake up the lost sheep. Spiritual Israel, that was where you lost me. Nah, they ain't even in the Bible. Christ ain't never celebrate his birth, and you shouldn't if you say you disciples. Revelation 1 and 14, he looked just like you, and it's evident he wasn't you. So what that make you? He ain't never showed his word to no other nation. They going into slavery, so the saints being patient. <laughs> 12 gates, 12 tries. All your Christian cops to do is eat pork and tell lies. Somebody told me the revolution would be televised. Take the scriptures out the Bible and they calling it revised. 2022 and you still out here paying tithes. Warm down Shirala, you sleep. Hell like wool with the burnt brand feet. Bringing out the scriptures, I heard somebody say teach. Fringes with the ribbon, yeah, my garment on fleet. The earth gon' be the inheritance of the meat. Fasten all weed, trying to make the flesh weak. Class in sense, go ahead, take a seat. Got my head all in them books like a key. Somebody give me Romans chapter 9 and verse 4. That'll tell you who the whole Bible written for. I've been in them scripts, you can hear it in my flow. I'm just trying to sow a seed and let somebody else know. Christ came for the broken hearted and the poor. We the pressing in the hood. Need I say more? If you in the spirit and the fruits gon' show. One man water, but yeah, I will make it grow. Oh, Esau is the end. Jacob the beginning. We gon' get the kingdom. We just got to stop sinning. You can look around and see America is finished. This one for them Israelites you still in the trenches. Come up out of her, my people. 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 Christ said we can't get the kingdom unless we repent. Lost sheep of the house of Israel. That's why he was sent. Fell into idolatry. The kingdom got rent. First Kings chapter twelve, where you read about the split. You don't read the old. The New Testament won't make sense. That's why they out here teaching we ain't gotta keep the laws. The Bible don't contradict. It's just so understandable. 
applause Try to justify their wickedness by running the ball Shall we continue with sin? That grace may abound God forbid, that's gonna be what get you put in the ground Not the hearers of the word, but the doers of the word If you say something, then you gotta prove it with the word And I heard another voice from heaven saying Come up out of her, my people That you be not partakers of her sins And that you receive not of her plagues For her sins have reached unto heaven And God hath remembered her iniquities Reward her even as she has rewarded you And double unto her according to her works In the cup which she hath filled, filled to her double How much she hath glorified herself And lived deliciously So much torment and sorrow give her For she saith in her heart I sit a queen and am no well And shall see no sorrow Therefore shall her plagues come in one day Death and mourning and famine And she shall be utterly burned with fire For strong is the Lord God who judges her and the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and lived deliciously with her shall bewail her and lament her when she shall see the soul of her the birth. Jacob, the beginning, we gon' get the kingdom, we just gotta stop sinning. You can look around and see America is finished. This one for the miserable, like she's still in the trenches. Come up out of her, my people. 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 Yeah. Uh huh. I gotta stay on watch, cause the demons they be lucky, stay the print up in the field, cause I know you got to get me, but I keep the sword talk, cause they be I'm on a mission, cause the devil be like, like, yeah, these demons be like, yeah, yeah, the devil be like, I see you watch, yeah, these demons be like, yeah, yeah, the devil be like, Christ like, yeah, I said the most high, and I keep the command. So I'm trying to stay on top, yeah, boy, like the service Can't let the devil They tryna be gang But listen to ya, yeah, he the real gang We start with the word, they thinkin' we strain But we really tryna speak the truth to you And make you stop the violence Hey Crash like Yeah Ha I gotta stay on watch, cause the demons they be lucky Stay the print up in the field, cause I know you got to get me But I keep the sword talk, cause they be on the mission Cause the devil be like Yeah, they demons be lucky You know I can't miss out on the kingdom Most I made it for me and my people I used to live that party life each and every night Gave attention to my demons, yeah Y'all been going off for no reason If you ain't need a mic, then we ain't speaking Jacob and Esau, we two different people Ain't no equivalent, no, we ain't equal Feeding the flock, we feeding our people Preaching the truth, can keep it a secret Gave his commandments, you know that I keep I'm trying to be out here preaching every season Notice some demons I left in the bleachers Don't go to church, cause them pastors deceive They preaching for money and teaching you evil They keeping our people from getting their king. Luck in the struggle, I got it in dirt yeah. Half is a car, but my blood is so pure yeah. Father like Jesus, he sprung out of Judah I break the commandments that cannot occur They loyal to God, never loyal to earth But I stay grounded, we came from the dirt Knowledge stay growing just like a girl's spur The shit that we preaching, you can't learn in church God put it in me to give you this word God put it in me to do all this work Need me some fringes to boy to my shirts Is it like women in dresses and skirts? Submissive to men, but no most I come first yeah. If they ain't order, it ain't gonna work Your yeah, wish I made it this way, so I ain't gonna buck up But just do what he say till I reach heaven gates so, Oh yeah Gentile strangers, like I ain't know it. Three hundred commandments, bet you ain't know it. The church is corrupt, so we gonna expose. The scriptures is clips, and we feel the love. You know I can't miss out on the kingdom. Most I made it for me and my people.
attention, my people. I used to live that party life each and every night. Gave attention to my demon, yeah. Y'all been going off for no reason. If you ain't need a mic, then we ain't speaking. Jacob and Esau, we two different people. Ain't no equivalent, no, we ain't equal. Feeding the flock, we feeding our people. Preaching the truth, can keep it a secret. Gave us commandments, you know that I keep. I'm trying to be out here preaching every season. Know there's some demons I left in the bleachers. Don't go to church, cause them pastors deceive. They preaching for money and teaching you evil. They keeping our people from getting the king. Both years of being deceived. Yes, I would murder it. Thief. How you gon' tell us that we not important when you took our land and identity? I'm from the tribe of the holiest kings, but we in the land of American dreams. Now we in the land of our captivity, now we in the land of our captivity. It's the spirit against the flesh, it's all a test. My struggle before a moment, most I can attest to that. Heard the truth and I got to it, ain't no point in looking back. We his chosen for a reason, other nations can't say we ain't truly blessed. He something he got them big racks, but he got that chump change. When you Birthright, you profane the most high's name. Got my people selling out like this a pair of fresh J's. Rather fly in the chariot than drive in the range. You know, yeah. I can't miss out on the king. The most I made it for me and my people. I used to live that party life each and every night. Gave attention to my demon. Yeah. Y'all just been going off for no reason. If you ain't need a mic, then we ain't speaking. Jacob and Esau, we two different people. Ain't no equivalent, no, we ain't equal. Feeding the flock, we feeding our people. Preaching the truth can keep it a secret. Gave us commandments, you know that I keep. I'm trying to be out here preaching every season. Notice some demons I left in the bleachers. Don't go to church because them pastors deceive. They preaching for money and teaching you evil. They keeping our people from getting the kingdom. Yeah. Shalom, Shalom. Welcome to tonight's class, the law call. I'm going to give all honor and glory to the Most High God, Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shah. All right, we're going to get started. We're going to face the east and pray. So, brothers, if you got your head covered, please uncover your head. Sisters, if you don't have your head covered, please get you something to cover your head, and then we will face the east and pray. All right, let's pray. The book of Psalms, chapter 63, from the top. O God, thou art my God. Early will I seek thee. My soul thirsted for thee. My flesh longed for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is to see thy power and thy glory. So as I have seen thee in the sanctuary, because thy loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise thee. Thus will I bless thee while I live. I will lift up my hands in thy name. Thy soul shall be satisfied with marrow and fatness. And my mouth shall praise thee with joyful lips. When I remember thee upon my bed and meditate on thee in the night watches, because thou hast been my help. There, therefore, in the shadow of thy wings will I rejoice. My soul followeth hard after thee. Thy right hand upholdeth me. But those that seek my soul to destroy it shall go into the lower parts of the earth. They shall fall by the sword. They shall be a portion for foxes. But the king shall rejoice in God. Everyone that sweareth by him shall glory. But the mouth of them that speak lies shall be stopped. I'll praise this to the most high God. Our Father, we humbly bow before your throne and praise your holy name. But thank you so much for allowing us to gather today to study your laws, your statutes, and commandments. Father, we pray that your Holy Spirit be upon this, this lesson. Give us the discernment, the wisdom, the understanding to apply what we learn in your laws, statutes, and commandments. How with all shall a young man cleanse his way, but by taking heed to the word. Father, we pray that you put your word, your laws, statutes, and commandments into our heart. Take away the stony heart and give us a fleshly heart, Father. We pray that you forgive us for our sins, Wipe away our iniquity and transgressions in the blood of your son, Yahweh Shah Hamashiach. And it's through his name that we pray. Amen.
Amen. All praises to the most high. All right. Uh, Obadiah, you able to read, King? Well, you can read. All right, All right, All right we're going to go to Genesis chapter, I mean, not Genesis, Deuteronomy chapter six, and we're going to, most I will, and we'll get through the whole thing, all right? So this is the law call. We're going to teach the law. So let's get into that. Let's start from verse one. Okay, Deuteronomy six and one. Now, these are the commandments, these are the commandments, the statutes, and the judgments which the Lord, your God, commanded to teach you that ye might do them in the land whither ye go to possess it. That thou mayest fear the Lord thy God to keep all his statutes and his commandments, which I command thee, thou and thy son and thy son's son, all the days of thy life, and that thy days may be prolonged. Hear, hear therefore, O Israel, and observe to do it, that it may be well with thee, and that ye may increase mightily, as the Lord God of thy fathers hath promised thee, in the land that floweth with milk and honey. Here right, is so this like it. This whole chapter is basically it's an uh, exaltation of the house. He's giving us laws and statutes and commandments that surround and revolve around him being exalted because he's the most high God. Right? He says, He says, Hear therefore, verse three, hear therefore, O Israel, and observe to do it. The it is the commandments, that it may be well with thee. And that ye may increase mightily as the Lord God of thy fathers have promised thee in the land that floweth with milk and honey. Right. So what's that going into in a, in a carnal sense that we have the resources that we need to survive. But also in a spiritual sense, it's going into uh, milk being the law. Right. Let's go to first Peter. Real quick. You open up another. Story. Yeah, let's go to first Peter's. Chapter two and verse one. All right, it said, um, it said, the land that floweth with milk and honey. Let's read verse one and two. All right, first Peter chapter uh, two and verse one. Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile and all hypocrisy, hypocrisy and envy and all evil speaking, as newborn mm -hmm. babes. Yeah, you said something, King. Oh yeah, you read. And as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word, that ye may grow thereby. Right. So the sincere milk of the word that's gonna help us grow is the law. Right. So he's telling us the land is gonna flow with milk, meaning that the laws are gonna run free course in this land that he promised to us. All right. Same thing with the honey. Let's go to Psalms chapter 119 and verse 103. Same thing with the honey, just on a deeper level. Psalms 119 and 103. All right, let's read that. Psalms chapter 119 and 103. Uh, let me let the screen clear up. It's kind of blurry. Hold up. Oh, there you go. How sweet are thy words unto my taste, yet sweeter than honey to my mouth. Right. So the word is like in the honey on a deeper level. It's the deeper parts of the word, right? The dark sands, the parables, right? The, the prophecies. These things can be likened unto honey, right? Watch this. He said, how sweet are thy words to my taste, thy words, yea, sweeter than honey. So the, the law is going to run free course and the deep sands of the Lord. Why? Right, let's get another precept. Proverbs chapter 25 and verse 16. Proverbs 25 and 16. Had thou found honey, eat so much as is sufficient for thee, lest thou be filled therewith and vomited. Right. So the deeper things of the word is like in the honey. If you eat too much of it, right, you can vomit it, meaning what? You cannot retain it in your knowledge. OK, that's why it's, it's good to have a, a say a little here and a little there. Right. You, you don't want to consume too much of that honey, the deep part of the word. Right. Let's keep reading verse. Let's go to verse 27. Uh, 
Come, verse 27, it is not good to eat much honey. So for men to search their own glory is not glory. Right. It's not good to eat much honey, meaning you, you it's, it's good to get into the deeper parts of the word. But when you you have men that do it for their own glory, too much honey, eating too much money, it says so for men to search their own glory is not glory. You shouldn't want to be trying to exalt yourself by knowing deep things in the laws or in the Bible. Right. Those things are there for a purpose, but it's not the thing that's going to make you grow, which is the milk. All right. So the land flowing with milk and honey, meaning the word is going to run free course in this land, this promised land once we get into it. Right. So let's keep let's go back to Deuteronomy six and let's keep reading. Verse four. Deuteronomy six and four. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul, and with all thy might. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thy heart. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shall and shall talk of them when thou sittest in thy house, and when thou wa walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. All right, now this is a commandment. Thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shall talk of them when thou sittest in thy house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. So it's a commandment to teach your children. Right. Let's get a precept. Let's go back to Proverbs. You got to teach your children. The words of the Lord. Proverbs chapter 22. And verse number six. Proverbs 22 and six. Train, train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. Right. Train up a child in the way that he should go. Meaning what? Teach him the law. Teach him the Bible. All right. And he will. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. Now, that don't mean if you train your child on what the Bible said, that they might not go off and be in the world, but they won't forget what they learn. Right. They will not. They will not forget what they learn. Right. He will not depart from it. All right. Watch this. Go to Psalms. You got to teach your children. Psalm 78. Now let's start at verse. Let's start at verse one. Con Psalm 78 and one. Give ear, O my people, to, to my law. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings of old, which ye have heard and known, and our fathers have told us. Uh -huh. All right, read on. You scroll down the screen, King. Oh, it's locked. You scroll. Right. That's the reason. Like yeah, that's, yeah. I'm probably, okay. It's probably glitching. I'll read it. It's okay. It says, uh, verse four, we will not hide them from our children, right? So let me start over verse one. It says, give ear, give ear, oh, my people, to my law. Incline, incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings of old, right? So the Lord speaks to us in parables. Dark sands, that's that honey, right? It says, which we have heard and known and our fathers have told us, right? So you're supposed to eventually, as you see your child growing in the spirit, getting themselves built up in the spirit when they can handle the, 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 the milk of the word, then you start to give them the stronger things of the word, the meat, the honey, right? It says, we will not hide them from our children, showing to the generations to come, the praise of Yahweh and his strength and his wonderful works that he have done. So we got to remind our children of what the Most High has done. That's to exalt the Most High. That's to sit him up on high, right? It says, for he established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our fathers that they should make known to their children. So it's a commandment to make known the things of the Most High to your children. 
right? It says that the generation to come might know them, even the children which should be born, who should arise and declare them to their children, right? It says that they might set their hope in Yahweh and not forget the works of Yahweh, but keep his commandments. That's how we're going to impart hope to our children, knowing the things that he's done in the past and that he will do in the future. All right. It says, and might not be as their fathers, a stubborn and rebellious generation, a generation that set not their heart aright and whose spirit was not steadfast with Yahweh. Right. So to avoid to make, to make it so that our children avoid the mistakes that we made, we're supposed to teach our children what this Bible said. I didn't grow up in the truth. Right. I grew up as a, a Baptist. Then I went to Jehovah Witness. And then in my uh, later years, I came into the truth. Right. So I went a long way just to get to the most high. Why? Because my parents didn't know. Right. So it's our responsibility as we find out the things of the Lord to share them with our children. Right. So let's real quick. Let's stay in Psalms. Let's go to Psalms chapter 40. And verse 16. All right. It says, let all those that seek thee rejoice and be glad in thee. Let such as love thy salvation say continually, the Lord be magnified. So that's the reason why we teach our children. So that all throughout the earth, as the earth gets replenished with people, it's in particular the Israelites, the Lord continues to be magnified. Right. We got to magnify the Lord every single day. Right. Watch this. Let's go to the book of Psalms. We're going to hang out in Psalms a little bit. Psalms 132. Psalms chapter 132 and verse number 10. All right. It says, for thy servant David's sake, turn not away thy face, the face of thine anointed. The Lord has sworn in truth unto David. He will not turn from it. Of the fruit of thy body will I set upon my throne. So he told David, I'm going to set of the fruit of your body to come through your loins, right? There's the someone who's going to sit on the throne. How? It says, if thy children will keep my covenant and my testimony that I shall teach them, their children shall also sit upon the throne or thy throne forevermore. So. You, by teaching your children, in particular, your sons, right? got to teach your daughters, too. But when you teach your children, you're setting them up to inherit the throne forever, right? That's leaving a real inheritance. Let me get that. Proverbs. That's leaving an inheritance for your child. Proverbs chapter 13, uh, verse 22. All right? It says, a good man leaveth an inheritance to his children's children. And the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. Now, on a carnal level, yeah, you can set up a 401k, a will with money, a trust fund. But a real inheritance that you can leave for your child is to teach them this Bible. Why? Because they're going to be in, they're going to be heirs to the throne if you do that. Right. You got to teach your children. So let's go back to Deuteronomy. Right. So it says verse seven. It says, and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy child, right? What does it mean to teach them diligently, right? Let's go to, let's go to the book of Sirach. Teach them diligently. Sirach chapter 30. So this is a, this is a, a commandment. We got to take heed to it, man. This is how we're going to, you're going to see our nation being set straight before the eyes of those who hate us. All right. It says, verse one, he that loveth his son causes him off to feel the rod that he may, that he may have joy of him in the end. Now on a carnal sense, yeah, you spank your child, you beat him on the sides, but in a spiritual sense, what's the rod, right? Watch this. Go to Psalms, feel the rod often. Psalms chapter 141. If you love your son, you're going to cause him to feel the rod. Psalms 141 and verse 5. It says, let the righteous smite me. It shall be a kindness and let him reprove me. It shall be an excellent oil, which shall not break my head. For yet my prayer 
also shall be in their calamity. All right. So when you reprove your child, you do it with the Bible. You do it with the law, statutes and commandments. That's the rod. Right. Watch this. Let's go to Proverbs. Cause them to feel the rod often. Proverbs chapter 22. And verse 15, it says foolishness is bound in the heart of a child, but the rod of correction shall drive it far from him. All right. So fool, a child is going to act up, but the rod of correction, what do we use to correct? Why right? watch this? What do we use for correction? Yeah, you can. You can. That's why you see kids. They get what our parents used to use that spare the rod, spare the rod, spoil the child to, to, to get you a whipping when we was little. But. We still was bad, right? We still acted up. You still acted up, right? Second Timothy, watch this. Chapter three and verse 16. What do we use for correction? It says, all scripture is given by inspiration of Yahweh and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, right? So the correction that you use, the rod that you're going to use mainly is this Bible. That's the main rod, right? Watch this. Go to Proverbs again. Chapter 29 and verse 15. It says, the rod and reproof give wisdom. Now, a belt don't give wisdom. A stick, a switch don't give wisdom. The rod that is talking about is the Bible, but a child left to himself bringeth his mother to shame. So you, you got to teach a child the Bible so that when they are alone, when they are away from you, then they don't bring shame to you. All right. So we have to teach our children this Bible. Watch this. Go back to Sirach 30. It says, verse two, he that chastises his son shall have joy in him and shall rejoice of him among his acquaintances. He that teacheth his son grieveth the enemy, and before his friends he shall rejoice of him. So when you teach your child what this Bible say, you're going to grieve the enemy, right? Because Esau got all everything set up for them to go off. The, the school, the prison pipeline. The schools look like prisons, right? That's why, that's why we go from school. Most of us, a lot of us don't graduate. You got a lot of us that do. Some of us don't graduate, and then we go to where? Prison. Go to the county, okay? Because you used to being in that type of environment, fighting in the school, all right? But when you teach your child, you grieve the you grieve the enemy, right? Watch this. Let's go to uh, Psalms. I'm going to get it this time. Esau cut it off last time in the prophecy call. I'm going to bring it out this time, all right? Psalms chapter 50 and verse 16. You're going to grieve the enemy. Watch this say, but unto the wicked, Yahweh said, what has thou to do to declare my statutes or that thou shouldest take my covenant in thy mouth? Right. So this is going into Esau. Watch this. Seeing thou hatest instruction and cast this away, cast is my words behind thee. That's what he did when he sold his birthright. When thou sawest a thief, thou then thou cons consentest with him and has been partaker with adulterers. Thou givest thy mouth to evil, and thy tongue frameth deceit. Thou sittest and speakest against thy brother. Thou slanderest thy own mother's son. So his brother is Jacob. He speak against Jacob, his own mother's son. All right, it says, these things hast thou done, and I kept silence. Though thou thoughtest that I was all together, thou thoughtest that I was all together, such as one as thyself, but I will reprove thee and set them in order before thine eyes. So we're going to be set in order as a nation. You can't stop it. This is a prophecy. And how is it going to happen? Particularly by you teaching your children what this Bible say. All right. He's going to set us in order before our enemies eyes. That's why I said, teach your child. He that teacheth his son grieveth the enemy. Okay, you grieve the enemy when you when you, when they see your child with fringes on, right? They know the, they know what sin is. Okay, they know that they gotta keep the laws. They know that they don't supposed to be celebrating birthdays and all this madness. 
they that grieves the enemy. Okay, so let's go back to Deuteronomy. All right, verse eight. It says, and thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thy head, thy hand, the law, right? Upon thy hand, meaning what? It's what you do. Your hand represents what you do, your actions. And they shall be as frontlets between thine eyes. What's between your eyes? Your mind, your brain. That's what you think about. What you do is the law. And thou shalt write them upon the posts of thy house and thy gates. Meaning, put the laws up in your home. Right. The Ten Commandments, you, you could put that in your house. Right. That's a commandment. So that why you can always see it. OK, you can always see it and, and, and know that you have to do those things. It says and it shall be when the Lord Yahweh shall have brought thee into the land, which he swore unto the fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac and to Jacob to give thee great and goodly cities, which thou buildest not. And houses full of good things, which thou fillest not, and wells dig, which thou diggest not, vineyards and olive trees, which thou plantest not, when thou shalt have eaten and be full, then beware lest thou forget the Lord. That's why you got to put them laws, keep them on your the front list of your eyes, what you think about, and then your, on your hands. It's got to be what you do, lest you forget the Lord, which brought thee out, which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt. From the house of bondage, thou shalt fear the Lord thy God and serve him and shall swear by his name. So you got to fear the Lord. That's a commandment, right? Fear the Lord is a commandment. Let's go to Proverbs. You got to fear the Lord. Chapter 10 and verse 27. Right. It says the fear of the Lord prolongs days, but the years of the wicked shall be shortened. So this goes back to your children, right? The fear of the Lord prolongs days. Let's go to Exodus. Teaching your children and them honoring your honoring their parents is going to do the same thing. It's going to prolong their days. Exodus 20 and 12. It says, honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. All right. So that's what it means to fear the Lord. OK, fear in the Lord. OK, you got to do that. It says. Uh, let me get this in. Um, let me go back real quick. Right, it says, "Thou shalt fear the Lord thy God and serve Him, and shall swear by His name." Swear by His name. What is that going into? Meaning, you gotta exalt the Most High. You gotta give Him credit for everything. Colossians chapter three and verse seventeen. You got to put the most high on a pedestal that he deserves. And we can't do it enough. It says, and whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord, Yahweh Shah, giving thanks to Yahweh and the Father by him. So everything we do in word or deed, we got to exalt the most high. You can't halfway exalt him, right? Watch this. Go back to Sirach, chapter 43. Everything that you do, you got to exalt the most high. That's what it means when it says swear by his name. All right, uh, Sirach, uh, chapter 43 and verse 28. It says, how shall we be able to magnify him? For he is great above all his works. Everything that he did, you could go to the most beautiful places on the planet. You could look at you could look at the planets that ain't this planet. You could look at the stars, the sun, everything that he made. He great above that. So how are we gonna magnify him? It says the Lord is terrible and very great and marvelous is his power. When you glorify the Lord, exalt him as much as you can. For even yet will he far exceed. And when you exalt him, put forth all your strength. And be not weary. Don't get tired of exalting the most high. All praises to the most high God, Yahweh. Everything we do, for you can never go far enough. Who has seen him that he might tell us? And who can magnify him as he is? Nobody can magnify him as he is. We can only strive to do it. Right? It says, there are yet hid greater things than, than these be. For we have seen but a few of his works. You can't even stare at the sun for, without going blind. You, that's just a few of his works, the things that we can behold. 
the parts of the earth that we can access now. It says, for the Lord a all things to that he gives. Why is out of wisdom and a mindset to know that they gotta exalt the most high? Right? So you gotta back that by back do verse 14. It says about the gods. All right, let's go to My internet a little shaky, right? So I'm gonna just read it off the Bible, right? So what I um no other right? and no other gods. Right? I can't have any other gods. That would be the opposite of okay. And verse 11, it says, Hath a nation changed their gods, which are yet no gods, but my people have changed their glory for that which does not profit. Okay, so it says another nation ain't changing their gods. So we shouldn't change our God. We can't go after the other gods of the nations because they are no gods. All right, they are no gods. Okay, it says from there, let me go to um 10, Jeremiah 10. And verse three, right? It says, for the customs of the people are vain, right? For one cutteth a tree out of the forest, the work of the hands of the workmen with the ax. So the point being the customs of the people are vain. The customs that go along with their God are vain, okay? And you should not go after them. To go after them means you're worshiping, okay? You're exalting them, 
You, and the only way you stop doing that is to renew your mind. That starts with the, the renewing of your mind. If you stop going after these other gods, right? So let's go back. That's the commandment. You cannot go after these other gods. All right. It says verse 16 again. It says, oh, uh, no. Verse 14. You shall not go after other gods of the gods of the people which are around about you. For the Lord thy God is the jealous God among you. Lest the anger of the Lord thy God be kindled against thee and destroy thee from off the face of the earth. You shall not tempt the Lord your God, right? So you can't tempt the Lord. Tempting the Lord is basically saying that he don't exist. It says you shall not tempt the Lord as you see him in Massa. Right? What's that going into? Let's go to Exodus chapter 17. He say, don't tempt me the way that you did in Massa. That's when Moses struck, struck the rock. And made the waters come out, right? I'm going to go to uh, chapter 17 and verse 7. It says, and he called the name of the place Massa, the Meribah, and Meribah, because of the chiding of the children of Israel, and because they tempted the Lord, saying, is the Lord among us or not? Right? When you say that, you're asking if the Most High God is real or not, right? Let's go to Psalms. Tempting the Lord is basically asking if he's real. And you can't do that. Psalm chapter 14 and verse uh, 4. It says, uh, no, verse 1. It says, the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt. They have done abominable work. There is none that doeth good. So you're a foolish person. To tempt the most high God. That's where Yahweh Shai got that from when, when Satan asked him to jump off the mountain. Basically, Satan is asking and, and saying, Is God real? Is does he actually exist? That's what his name means, Yahweh. He is. He exists. So of course he exists. Of course he's real. All right. You can't tempt the most high God and and and, and accuse him of not being who we say he is. All right? Watch this. Let's go to Isaiah. Chapter 41 and verse 21. It says, produce your cause, saith Yahweh. Bring forth your strong reason, saith the king of Jacob. Let them bring, let them bring them, let them bring them forth and show us what shall happen. Meaning, if you don't think God is real, you must think that you're God in his stead. Bring forth your strong reasons. Tell us what's gonna happen next, since you think you God, right? It says that we may consider them and know the latter end of them or declare us things for to come. Show the things that are that are to come hereafter, that we may know that ye are gods. So when you tempt God, you're essentially putting your place in the stead of the Most High God. Tell us what's going to happen if you God. Yea, do good or do evil, that we may be dismayed and behold it together. Behold, ye are of nothing. The most I say, you ain't nothing because you can't do what he do. You can't tempt him because you can't do what he does. Right. It says ye are of nothing and your work of not an abomination is he that chooses you. So anybody that put their trust in man is an abomination. All right. You can't tempt the most High God. Try to sway people away from keeping the law, statutes and commandments. That will make you false in the eyes of the Lord. And an abomination, right? So let's go back to Deuteronomy 6. So you can't tempt the Lord, right? He says, ye shall dil dil diligently keep the commandments of the Lord your God. Diligently, right? It says, and his testimonies and his statutes, which he has commanded thee. And thou shalt do that which is right and good in the sight of the Lord. So we got to do that, which is right and good in the sight of the Lord, not what's good in your eyes, right? In the sight of the Lord. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 21. Do that, which is good and right in the sight of the Lord. Proverbs chapter 21 and verse two, it says every way of a man is right in his own eyes, but the Lord pondereth the heart. So you may think what you think is right, but this, but it's wrong. It's going to get you killed in the end of the day. 
you got to rely on thus says the Lord to do to do justice and judgment is more acceptable to the Lord than sacrifice A high look and a proud heart and a plowing of the wicked is sin. So it's a, a having a prideful look about yourself is sin. Right. Trying to do what's right in your eyes is sin. According to the Lord, you can't have that about yourself. Right. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 14. And verse 12. Right. It says a scorner. It says now that's 15. Proverbs 14 and verse 12. It says there is a way which seemeth right unto a man. But the end thereof are the ways of death. So you got to do what's right in the sight of the Lord, not what's right in your eyes. The ends of the what's going on in your brain and your eyes is death. It's going to get you killed. All right. Even in laughter of the heart is sorrow. Even the laughter of the heart is sorrowful. And the end of that of the of that mirth is heaviness. Meaning when you think you're having a nice time, it's going to be it, you really sorrowful because, you know, that you ain't doing the right thing. You know that you're trying to be right in your own eyes instead of doing what the Lord say, right? The end thereof is sorrowful and heaviness. It says, verse 14, the backslider in his heart shall be filled with his own way and a good man shall be satisfied from himself. Meaning if you're a good man, you're going to be satisfied because you're going to be doing the things of the Lord, all right? But a backslider is going to be going in his own way. All right, so it says, let me read it again. Deuteronomy 6. It says, I do that which is right and good in the sight of the Lord. Right, right and good in the sight of the Lord. Let me go to Psalms, chapter 33. You can't do what's right in your own eyes. And it's for your good, it's for our good. Psalm 33. And verse number four. It says, for the word, Lord, all his works are done in truth. So your way ain't right. My way ain't right. The, the word of the Lord is right. For the word of the Lord is right. And all his works are done in truth. So we got to do what he says to do, not what we think we should be doing. That will make you go off, right? So let's go back to Deuteronomy 6. How much time I got? 20 minutes, come. All right, Deuteronomy 6 and verse 18 again. It says, and thou shalt do that, thou shalt do that which is right in the sight of the Lord, that it may be well with thee, and that thou mayest go in and possess the good land, which the Lord swear unto thy fathers, to cast out all thy enemies from before thee, as the Lord has spoken. And when thy son asketh thee in time to come, saying, what mean the testimonies and the statutes and the judgments which the Lord our God has commanded you? So in time, your child is going to begin to ask questions. Why are we doing this? Why we don't eat pork? Why we don't celebrate this? Why we don't hang with them? Then you're supposed to bring, that's the time to exalt the most high. That's the time to remind them, right? It says, when he asks, he says, verse 21, then thou shalt say unto thy son, we were Pharaoh's bondmen in Egypt, and the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand. So what's he telling them? Take, keep the Passover. Let your child keep the Passover with you, right? That's why we keep it. Let's go to uh, Exodus chapter 12. And verse, I'm going to start at verse 24. It says, and ye shall observe this thing for an ordinance. The ordinance, the thing is the Passover. So when you keep the Passover, you're, you're essentially exhausting the Most High. You're making sure that the remembrance of the Most High God stays in the earth. Right? He shall observe, it says, as in the Lord don't, hold on. Tempting also means not to test, con, as in don't test the Lord, con. Tempting don't, yeah, exactly. Don't test the Lord. Right. It says uh, Exodus 12 and 24. It says, and ye shall observe this thing for an ordinance to thee and to thy sons forever. Uh, 
it, as he hath promised that ye shall keep this service. And it shall come to pass, and it shall come to pass when your children shall say unto you, What mean ye by this service? That you shall say it is the sacrifice of the Lord's Passover, who passed over the houses of the children of Israel in Egypt, when he smote the Egyptians and, and delivered our houses, and the people bowed the head and worshiped. So you gotta go over the Passover. You gotta teach a child the Passover, the feast days of the Lord. It's exalting the most high, right? So let's go back. So that's what it means in Deuteronomy 6, 21. When and then thou shalt say unto thy son, when, when we were Pharaoh's bondmen in Egypt and the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand. Teach him the Passover. It says, and the Lord showed signs and wonders great and sore upon Egypt, upon Pharaoh and upon all his household. Before our eyes, we've seen it, okay? It says, and he brought us out from thence that he might bring us in to give us the land which he swore unto our fathers. And the Lord commanded us to do all these statutes to fear the Lord our God for our good always that he might preserve us alive as it is at this day. Uh, to do all his commandments before the Lord our God as he has commanded us. So it says it shall be our righteousness if we keep the commandments. To do what the Most High God says is going to make us righteous, right? But in, in reality, nobody's righteous. Because why? We all go off, right? Let's go to Romans. Everybody goes off in this thing, man. Everybody's going to go off. But you now you have an opportunity to repent, right? It says Romans chapter 3. In verse 10, it says, as it is, there is none righteous. No, not one. So none of us can claim to be righteous. Nobody can. You have to, only, only way you can be righteous and made righteous is to go through the righteous one. Okay, who is that? That's Yahweh Shah. Let's go to Ezekiel, uh, Sirach, chapter 18. And verse number two, it says, the Lord only is righteous. And there is none other but he. So the only one that's righteous is Yahweh Shai. So it says, keep the commandments and we'll be, it'll be our righteousness. Why? Because he is the word. He is the commandments, right? Let's go to John. He is the commandments. So we keep him, his commandments, then we're essentially, we're abiding in him like the scriptures say. John 1 and 1, it says, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God. Word was God. So Yahweh Shah is the word, right? He was with the Most High. When he spoke the word, that was him creating Yahweh Shah, right? So the only way to be righteous is to go through the righteous one. Watch this. Go to John, first John. The only way to be righteous is to go through the righteous one. First John, chapter one. Uh, let me see where I want to start. Let me see. Let me start at verse. Man, this whole thing hard. Man. Uh, let me start at verse seven. Right. It says, but if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Yahweh Shai, Hamashiach, is the son cleanses us from all sin. So if we walk in the light, which is the commandments. Right. Let's get that. Somebody might not know what the light is. Proverbs chapter 6 and verse 23. It says, for the commandment is a lamp and the law is light and the reproofs of instruction are the way of life. So it says, Yahweh Shai is the light, right? Watch this. Go back to John chapter 1 and I think it's verse 9. So we walk in the light, which is the law then you're essentially, you're abiding in your house. John chapter one and verse nine, it says, that, that, that coming into the world. It says, it says, let me see. Let me see. Well, 
Nah, John, John, yeah, yeah. Yeah, how is the light, right? It says verse nine. Let me start at verse six. It says, There was a man sent from Yahweh whose name was John. The same was for a witness to bear witness of the light. Who did John bear witness of? Yahweh He made his path straight, right? It says, The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light. And all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but he was sent to bear witness of the light. That that was the true light, Yahweh Shai, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. So he lighteth every man that comes into the world. He's the light. Watch this. Go to John chapter 3 and verse 18. It says, he that believeth on him, Yahweh Shai, is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already. Why? Because you remain unrighteous. You're not cleansed because you're not going through your high All right. It says, because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten son of Yahweh. And this is the and this is the condemnation. That light is coming to the world. Yahweh Shah came into the world. And men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light. That you hate the law if you really want to just do evil. Because the law is going to correct you, right? It says, so let's go back to 1 John, verse 7 again, verse, chapter 1 and verse 7. So it says, but if we walk in the light, Yahweh Shai, as he is in the light, because he is the law, he's in the law, he's keeping the law, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Yahweh Shai HaMashiach, his son cleanseth us from all sin, right? So it says, if we say that we have no sin, we have deceived ourselves and the truth is not in us. So can't nobody say that they don't have no sin. If you say that you don't have no sin, brothers go off all the time. Sisters go off all the time. But you walk in that light. You walking into the blue. And cleanse you. Watch this. Verse 9. It says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. And to cleanse us from all unrighteousness, making you what? Righteous, right? So the law makes you righteous, but without it, you're unrighteous. If that makes sense. It says, verse 10, if we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us, right? If we say we haven't sinned, then we make him a liar and his word is not in us. This whole first book, this whole thing is fire, man. But all praises to the most high, man. So we have to walk in the light. We have to walk in that light because without it, we have to walk in the in the, in the ways of Yahweh Shah. We can't become righteous unless we go through Yahweh Shah. That's the only way anybody can be righteous. Okay. So with that, I'm gonna get all if anybody got anything, you can bring it out. But that's all I had for the lesson. Uh Deuteronomy 6. Let's see. All right, with that, we give all honor and glory to the Most High God, Yahweh. All right, in the name of His Son, Yahweh Shah. With that, I say, you have oh, so, go ahead. Oh yeah, Sirach thirteen seventeen. Yeah, all praises to the Most High God. So rock 13, 17. All right, it says, what fellowship have the wolf? Still up. Con, we are, like, can you hear? Con, we hear you. Con, can you read it again? Uh, it says, What fellowship have the wolf with the lamb? So the sinner with the godly. So basically, we got to light. Like you said, we got to walk it with your house shine. You know, he is the light. And we don't have, we can't have fellowship with uh, with the wolf. We can't do it with sinners. That's all I got. Con. Con, that's right. 
Khan. Uh, you get it. Who's Robert? You trying to 30 in verse 19? Fine. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 30 and 19. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life and both thou and thy seed, that, that, that both thou and thy seed may live. All right, so, like the like, book bring it out, why they listen to us, we got to keep these commandments, man. We got to keep the law. I mean, how is I is the light, he is the way. If you're not keeping this commandment, you're going to abide in darkness and death, Think like that. You got two choices. There's no third choice. There's no fourth choice. There's no fifth choice. Is he going to keep the commandments to live, or is he going to do contrary to the commandments and, and just death and die? Both. There's no other, there ain't no other route you can take. Ain't no other path. Ain't no, well, hey, maybe I can possibly do this. No. Either you going you to keep these commandments, like Lord say, be the light, or you're going to be dark and die. That's it. Right here. Uh -huh. Me at this in First Peter chapter two and verse nine. It says, But ye are royal priesthood and how for the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. All right. So he called us out of the darkness, out of the sin, into the marvelous light, telling us that now you can repent. Y'all to choke, y'all are the people. You can repent now. Because Yahweh Shada and died. Right, the brother had Second Corinthians chapter six and verse fourteen say, "Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers, for what fellowship have righteousness with unrighteousness, and what communion have light with darkness? What communion? If you abide in Yahweh, you can't be. And we get it. You can't be righteous and unright. You can't be both. You can't have one foot in and one out." All right, Revelation chapter uh, 22, I think it is, right? Yeah, 22 and verse 11. It says, he that is unjust, let him be unjust. Let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let them be holy still. So if you're going to get in a low, stay in the light. Don't change your mind and get back into the world, back into the darkness. All right? You're making the most high out of a You got an advocate, your house side, pleading on your behalf. So you messing up his, what we call it in the world, your face card. You making his face card look bad, right? Because he's pleading, he's vouching for you. So if you're going to be unrighteous, stay unrighteous. If you're going to get in that light and clean yourself up, then stay clean. All right. Let me see. Look at this. Oh, Romans 7 and 12. Come on, let me get that. Yeah, it's lucky, man. My internet a little crazy where I'm at right now. So I'm breaking up. I apologize. All right. Romans 7 and 12. It said, wherefore the law is holy and the commandment holy and just and good. Huh? So that's what's going to make us good. When it say do that which is good in the sight of the Lord, that's what it's talking about. Do it the most high. Do the commandments of the most high. All right? All right. So if anybody had anything else, you can bring it out. <laughs> if not, I'm going to once again give all honor and glory to the Most High God, Yahweh. All right, by Hashem Yahweh Shah. With that, I'm say Shalom. 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 Shalom.